Hi, this is Sarah, the Stitchin' Mommy, and it's Monday, October 8th, and I'm here for a weekly stitching update. Um, some, some of what happened stitching-wise this week felt really productive, and I had lots of goals met, um, but other projects didn't seem to get as much time as I would have liked, so it was a little bit, lots of highs and lots of eh. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit low. So, um, but it, overall, I guess it was a good week. So, and starting off, I want to do a little bit of housekeeping. I never heard from, I believe it was Victoria Coleman, Coleman who, um, this is not very easy to open, <laughs> who um, won this chart a couple of videos ago. Um, I still, I left a comment on your comment. Victoria, but I haven't heard from you to know your address to sh ship this to you. If, um, I know in the past I have not received some comments that have been left for me, so I wanted to put a call out there if anybody knows her, if knows that she has an Instagram account or some other way I could get a hold of her to let her know she won, or if you want to let her know she won and send her on over here to, um, send me her email. I'll leave my um, email below as well, but I also have Instagram private message or even my Etsy shop. You can private message me any of those ways to, um, or Facebook. I have Stitch and Mommy on Facebook. You could private message me through there to get me your address. I'd love to send this to you. And I think if I don't hear from you by next week, I will draw another number from the people that already signed up. So there's that. And then I want to, I had one bit of stitchy kindness, uh, a rack, I guess, random act of kindness. A, a video or two ago, I was commenting how my little 99 cent store planner was getting to the end of its range. It was a two-year planner, super cheap. I forget why I even bought it in the first place. But I ended up using it for my stitching and really liked it. And I made some comment, an offhand comment, that I wonder if the 99 cent store has new ones that would be 1920 range. Because I kind of wondered if it would be like a 2018, 19 range because that's why it's cheap and at the 99 cent store? I don't know. So I was just curious. I threw a comment out there. I haven't been to check myself. And then today, this week in the mail, guess what shows up? <laughs> in the mail, a 2019-2020 kitten's little mini planner calendar just like the one I already had so that's really perfect I don't really know who it's from um, there was a, a name on the address label but I don't recognize it so it may be somebody that I only know your name with your like your internet tag um, or maybe I just don't remember but thank you <laughs> this is perfect <laughs> so that was really sweet and really um, someone was paying attention and listening and thought they wanted to send a little a little smile my way and it was great I was not expecting it I was like what is that it's too early for color and cotton it was a cute little package you know and that was fun so thank you <laughs> now I can start planning uh, for next year a little bit more and that'll be fun I'll definitely put that to good use um, going forward it with my stitching the first thing I told you I was going to work on was my Simpsons piece for my husband. And this is a meant to be a full coverage piece, but I am not going to stitch the background. They have it be white, and then this inside of the circle is also white, and I'm not stitching either of those. So I will stitch the white, like his shirt and their eyeballs and stuff, but I'm not going to stitch the background. I'm not going to stitch the back of this circle. Um, so it's not technically full coverage the way I'm doing it. I I am recharting this because the pattern is horrible to read, um, but I didn't get a lot of time on it uh, last Monday, and part of that was because of the video and editing and stuff, and then I forget what else I was doing, um, but I don't know. I was distracted by something, and oh yeah, that's right. Last Monday was a heartbreaking Broncos game where we went into it expecting to lose and played pretty well in the beginning. We were tied and then we were winning and then we ended up losing anyways. So that was kind of a roller coaster of a game. But since this is a secret for my husband, 
and it's on 40 count. I couldn't stitch on it during the game. I had to pull out something else. So I was stitching during that time, but I wasn't able to stitch on this. So the time I did get when I could be stealthy was not a lot. So I ended up pulling it out again later in the week just to do a little bit more because I felt like I didn't get hardly anything done on it. Um, so this is what it looked like last time. And here's where I'm at now. I did just finished out the length of, of yellow that I had on my needle, which was not a whole lot. And then I came back a little bit later in the week and did two short lengths of black, like literally, like just like five or six inches each. Um, they go a long way. So you can kind of see the outline of Homer getting started there. So I thought that was fun to do a little bit of outline so kind of see where it's going to start going. <laughs> and it is fun to one length of thread on 40 count, one over one half stitches um, goes really fast. You get a lot of stitching. Um, a lot of uh, what's the word? <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. You cover a lot of ground with one length of thread um, on such fine, fine space. So that's kind of fun when you have time for it. Um, the next thing I worked on was on the second. I worked on my son's touchdown piece. And this one I was planning to do some backstitching, and I did. And I've managed to finish that section and start on another one, so that was a good goal that I finished. This is what it looks like looked like last time. And here's how far I got. So this upper section is 100% complete. All the back stitching is finished and I started down here on the defender's helmet. I was going to do his pants next and I asked my and then I realized this was really close to his hand. So I asked my son, "What do you want me to work on next?" the main character's pants or this guy's helmet and he he voted helmet so that's where I went next so this helmet is actually minus the face mask this like the main part of the helmet is actually finished being stitched so that's kind of fun so I got a good chunk on that um, on one day so not too shabby then I pulled out my daughter's piece, Snow Queen, by Shannon Christine Designs. This is what she will look like. And I made some good progress at the retreat last week. And then tipped over. Realized, you know, retreat amounts of stitching doesn't really happen in real life. And I knew that, but it was kind of... And I got so distracted by all sorts of other things, which are good things and some things that needed to happen. And I think because I had a four day rotation on this, there was more cushion to feel freedom to go fritz off and do other little things that I had been thinking about without feeling like I was gonna compromise my stitching time, which it really did because I didn't get a a full four days of stitching on this because I was doing other things and I'll show share those later but um, this is what this looked like last time and here she's at now so my I ideally I was hoping to get this section completely finished and then even work on this section and I did not quite get the section finished it is stitched and back stitched but it does not have all of these little like Chronic starbursts around the silver. I did this length down here, but see these ones don't have them yet. So all the silver beads will have these starbursts, and they're, that's not all complete yet. So it's almost finished, but not quite. But it is a good uh, a good amount of progress, I suppose. Um, and looking forward to getting this out again. At least, at the very least, I'll probably give it another four days at the beginning of November, um, just like I did this time. And then, depending on how quickly I can finish off the um, some of my other two other Christmas finishes I want to finish, um, we'll, de we'll determine when I pull that back out to focus on a finish for that. If... My Christmas pieces are taking too long. I might bring this out just to make sure it gets done before the beginning of December so I can finish it for my daughter's birthday. 
or if my Christmas pieces finish early, I can get it out early. So I don't know. Hopefully my Christmas pieces will be done quickly and then I can just be done with them and move on to this one. So we'll have to wait and see about that. Um, after I spent some time on that, I worked on... Th yesterday I worked on my my S fairy for my birthday, which is my birthday piece. So I'll do this every 7th. This is my Nora Corbett fairy. The letter S. And this is what she looked like last time. Keep tipping things over. And here is where I got to yesterday. I'm really happy with, again, another little goal. Um, these top two wings are all the way done. I, I worked on this stitching um, a little bit while my parents were here, and then what, what were we doing later? Oh, during a hockey game. No, no, I was, I don't know, something else. I did this, some backstitching during the hockey game, but I got these backstitched with number four braid and put their little jewels in. There's one more wing that comes out here that will have another jewel and, you know, more backstitching clearly, but I thought that turned out pretty cute. Filled in this little chunk a little bit more um, as well. So that will come out again next month on the 7th and see what else I can get done. Another cute one. <laughs> and a decent progress. I wasn't expecting to get as much done on it as I did, but then I ended up getting more time to stitch in the evening than I expected, so that was kind of a bonus. And let's see. While we were watching shows this week, like BattleBots and the Broncos game last week, um, I worked on my Adventure Awaits Stitch Along by Caterpillar Crossstitch. And I'm working on Clue 4, and I finished Clue 4. So this is another little mini finish. This is what it looked like last time. Let's get this wrapped around here. And this is what it looks like now. So this one had a very kind of, not really tropical, but it was very bright, like lots of these blues, two different shades of the, of the bright blues. There's a Sydney Opera House and a boomerang and fireworks. And I added this cute little penguin and that clue four is finished. So now I think we just have North and South America. <clears throat> and I think that's all the clues there are. I'm not, I don't think there's three more. I think there's two more, but I could be wrong. Um, so that next one will come out on the 22nd. So that's got a few weeks before I need to pull this out again. And that's been fun to work on. It's kind of a nice one, um, having a little Ada one going on, um, for times like that when I'm, when we were watching a show or something and I could just pull it out and it's easy to work on, it's easy, easy to follow, um, and I don't have to have really good lighting, and it's it's kind of a nice um, nice to have a piece like that around. And next year, when I'm planning to not have any new starts, that will include stitch alongs. And so um, I'm actually really looking forward to not having pieces like that with regular that I need to keep up with regularly. I will probably be working on some Etsy pieces that way, but um, things like the Storytime Sampler, which is coming up this month, um, it'll be nice to not to have those anymore next year because I can find a piece that I currently have that's an Ada piece, it's a fairly, or, or even linen, but something that's easy to count, um, can be my go-to in front of the TV piece. And then I'll make progress on one of my regular whips on, in the course of normal life. So I'm kind of looking forward to having my bonus extra pieces be more of my whips just to continue to whittle down <laughs> all of those things. So even some small, yeah, full coverage isn't the greatest for in front of the TV, but that can, full coverage can sometimes be a travel project in the car. I have done that before. Um, but other things are nicer because then you see progress faster. So anyways, we'll cross those bridges when we get there and see what what whips I have left um, at the end of the year. So um, last, <clears throat> it's 
Last week I was working on June and was almost finished with it and I finished it. This week, like I hoped I would, I actually did like a few stitches on it here at home just to make sure it got done. Because I knew I wouldn't have any more time until today and I wanted to just get it done. Um, so this is what it looked like last time. And here it is now. I think it turned out pretty cute. With the June and the bees and the flowers and the cherries and the pretty blue border. So that one's done. Now I can get this back to Shelly um, to figure out if I'll mail that or visit or something to get that back to her. And I will be starting, I thought this was I thought this was the one I was going to show you that I was going to work on, but it's probably over there in my travel piece already. I will be starting January, like today, um, in the valley line. So I'll show you that next week. And my Focus Furry Animals Freebie little few stitches every day piece is coming along slowly. <laughs> it's It's getting more like an average of five minutes a day, not 15. So it is coming along pretty slowly. I don't necessarily see a lot of progress from week to week. I know from day zero to now, there's a lot done, but from week to week, it's hard to see progress. Um, I have been picking colors. This is what it looked like last time. I'll show you this first. This is what it looks like now. I have been picking colors in this corner I picked a couple of things here, so this is all finished um, so that I have more blocks to count as complete. So now I believe I have 13 complete, which is a little less than 13% finished, technically speaking, based on completed blocks. Um, <clears throat> there's another color that's got a lot in here that I want to do next. Um, there's also some colors up here that if I work on them, I'll get some more blocks done. So there's a few goals that I can head towards in the next, you know, to work on next. But it is coming along. It's just slow. <laughs> so there's that one. And <clears throat> let's see. What else did I do? I did, I did um, some restarts. So I told you I had two full coverage pieces that I had already started a while back and re- realized during arbitrary August especially that I did not want to continue them on the fabric they were on. The first one <clears throat> was um, Empress Eugenie by The Golden Kite. I love this piece because it's got all sorts of ladies in fancy dresses and I waffled about getting it for a while because it's so big but eventually I just broke down and did it because I wanted to. <laughs> and so um, during Arbitrary August, I was working on, I, I was doing this two over one half stitches on 28 count, what I thought was Lugana. And it's it's very loose weave and it's, um, I was not happy with it for a full coverage piece, at least the way I stitch in hand. It was very stretchy probably the not a good fabric for a half stitch either because it would it's so, it's so it moves around so much it doesn't have any structure really on its own um so i decided to restart it i bought a piece of 40 count even weave in order to restitch it tiny to make the whole piece a little bit smaller because i know it's going to be enormous and then this past week i realized i can't do this on 40 count one over one because it's got blends I need to stitch with two strands. So, and I purposefully bought the version with blends because it has more detail. They do have a version of this that's in solid colors, but I didn't want that one. I wanted the one with extra detail. So, <clears throat> that was annoying, especially since I've already bought that fabric. So, I have that for something else, I guess, now. And I went to my stash to see, I have some 28 count Jobelin Leftover, but I cut a piece of ink circles out of that, uh, cut a piece of fabric out of my big piece for ink circles tapestry. So now that piece was not big enough for this design. So then I went to the gray Monaco that I bought for, <clears throat> well, I bought it just for fun, but I'm doing these on it. And it was a whole yard of fabric. So I realized 
I had enough of that to cut a piece for this. So I ended up, I've already cropped two rows of pages off the top here that were background that I didn't want to waste my time on. <clears throat> and when I was going back to the drawing board on this one, I decided to go ahead and slice this off too. There's a little bit in the shadows, it's hard to tell, <clears throat> right here, there's a little bit that's like maybe the edge of a dress, but really, <clears throat> it's not going to matter. I'm not going to be able to see it anyway. So <clears throat> I'm, I chopped off this last row of pages too. So it makes it slightly, it's 850 wide instead of 900 wide, which is still ridiculous, but um, made the fabric not quite as long either, which is helpful since I roll it up horizontally. Um, so I restarted that. <clears throat> I actually got the fabric cut and serge for that one and my other restart all rolled up with their needles, ready to go. <clears throat> and part of me was thinking, <clears throat> that's good enough. They're restarts. They don't have to be completely, like, have a stitch put in them. They're ready to go. My my brain kind of feels like they're started, restarted already because they're in their roles where they should be. They're cut to size. The old ones are put away. They're ready to go. So part of me was thinking, I'm just going to leave it at that. And then later that day, I wasn't really feeling like stitching on my Snow Queen for some reason. And maybe it was because I had was kind of in the zone for those other projects. But um, I thought, you know what? I'm just going to do it. I'm going to restart them. Let's go for it. Um, so I created my my graphs too <laughs> for them that have that show the squares finished which nothing's finished yet let me show you um i have it have it in my binder <clears throat> there's that one with all the all the pages <laughs> and here is my restart <clears throat> on Dove Gray Monaco, 28 count, two over one half stitches. So I focused on the first block with one color, which ran into the other side and ran into the column next door because that's how I stitch. And then just, um, I still had my thread, you know, ready. I just, just focused on the first um, block and stopped because it was just a restart. I'm not planning to like spend a lot of time on it right now. I'll, I'll just wait for when this comes around in, in a proper rotation. But that one's ready to go and it's on Monaco which I love doing full coverage pieces on because it's nice and thick and um, holds its own but it's still soft so happy about that. My other restart is the Young Gardener by Art of Stitching. I won this pattern. I, I could try to maybe re, reprint this because I noticed my printer <laughs> when I did this was must have been running out of ink. But um, I won this in a monthly drawing, I think, via their newsletter a while back. And I think she's currently on hiatus or something. But I liked this pattern um, and I had been doing it one over one half stitches on 32 count back before I knew about 40 count even weave I don't even think 40 count even weave was a thing at the time so I kind of thought 32 count even weave was the closest I was going to get so and I actually think I started it on linen 32 count MCG textiles linen the coverage was not good <laughs> so I knew for a while that I wanted to restart this one and I did so this is 40 count Two over one half stitches, just a little bit in the top block as well with one of the colors. And so that's officially restarted too. And he's so cute. <laughs> a lot smaller than the other one. And I, the more I think about it, the more I'm really happy that I didn't do Empress Eugenie on this tiny fabric because it is a lot easier to see on 28 count. And if that's going to be one of my nursing home pieces because it's one of my, it's my second largest full coverage piece. I thought it was my biggest and it's actually not. Um, my flower garden, Heaven and Earth Designs, is my biggest. Um, probably because I cropped this one. Um, 
But if it's going to be a nursing home piece, it needs to be a little bit bigger. And so all of the pieces I have on 40 count um, are small. Like the designs are not the large pieces. All the large pieces I have are either on 18 count or 28 count or 25 count. So that's a little bit more doable. And on Saturday, we decided to, we've, we kind of finished up all of our redecorating projects in our family room, which our TV room, which is where we have some of our national park themed artwork and things. My frosted pumpkin stitchery, the national park birthday sal. I can't remember what the original pattern is called. I'd have that framed and on the wall in there already. And the one from this past year, which was greetings from the parks, um, I have had unfinished, or it's been finished, stitched, but I, ha I haven't framed it or anything because I didn't know what I wanted to do with it until we were done with that room. And it's been eating away at me because usually I finish things immediately when I'm done stitching. So I finally got this up in a frame and it's it can go in there. So this is Greetings from the Parks by Frosted Pumpkin. It's on 18 count beige Ada that I got on clearance at Joann's. The only changes I made were this, these border colors were, and this heart here. I think those were color and cotton, maybe? Because um, I thought that gave it a little bit more depth. And this is a frame I found on clearance at Walmart. And I'm using the kickstand, but it has, um, it has wall mounts if I decide to do that at some point. But right now I am just sitting it on the top of our media cabinet. So that's that. It's slightly crooked <laughs> in the way I laced it. I laced it around the mat board and just popped it in there. That's kind of how I usually do stuff. Um, the mat that came with it, this is a five by seven mat. Because this is fairly solid stitching, um, you can't real you can't see where the mat cutout is to make it look a little bit different. So I just laced it around that piece of mat board and called it good. So it's done and on display, and that's a finish. That's an exciting goal. That's been it's nice now at the end of the year to kind of tick 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 all these little boxes that have been kind of sitting out waiting to be done. So I think that's it for stuff I did this past week. So going forward, I'm going to work on my story time sampler for a few days. I think I have slotted four days on this. Ideally, it would be nice to get it done sooner than that, um, but we'll see. Sometimes four days isn't, isn't long enough, but this is what that looks like. I am going to be down here for October. However, I moved Anne up here, and I'm going to be doing Pride and Prejudice. That's my own chart. I took the Pride and Prejudice characters from the Happily Ever After style that was last year and squished them in here, kind of like these guys. <clears throat> and I think I put some of the topiaries in there too that were in the Happily Ever After ones. I kind of tucked them in behind the characters. And up here, instead of this, <coughs> I'm going to be using the border from this one. So instead of the castle, I kind of recharted a little house to be a similar color scheme to the Pemberley house that's in the other one. The other happily ever after is like a big chunk compared to these little guys. So they have a big old house and a lake and everything in that one, which wouldn't fit. Um, but I have a tiny little house up here and then the two characters. So I can't really show you what that looks like because it's just a chart that I printed out. But I will be working on that this week hopefully to finish it and maybe get a little bit more done on the banner this is what this this looks like now and this will be fun to see finished as well as the year comes to a close so that's where that is and I will hopefully show you a completed little Pride and Prejudice people um, Elizabeth and Dar Darcy next time, so we'll see. And after this is done, my goal for the rest of the month, except for 
a couple more daily pieces and the Adventure Awaits clue is to just start finishing stuff. So the first thing I want to focus on finishing is my Moonlight Skater Stocking. I'm really debating between this one and my Christmas Wreath. They're both really close to a finish, but kind of, I kind of just want this one done. And I, I may mean, want the other one done too, but I think because this is needlepoint and they're half stitches, it might go a little faster. And there's not a lot of back stitching, whereas the other one has a tiny bit of cross stitch and a whole lot of back stitch. So I'm going to just go with this one for now. And if it the, when the story time sampler's done, if I'm feeling the other one a little bit more, I might switch. I reserve the right to do that. <laughs> but in the, in, at this point, I think I'll stick with this one to focus on a finish. So here's where I'm at with this one right now. And I'm going to go ahead probably pretty soon and mark it where I want it to stop so that I can just start filling in along the edges. It's all curly. Um, because I'm going to make it a six inch square like pillow so it'll be like this big not not the stocking anymore and just kind of fill in the rest of the ice around it i'm gonna cut off part of this boy cut off the dog you know i'm not gonna like do the outside stuff because then it'll look like something's missing i'm just gonna do more ice so hopefully that will go fairly quickly and should, hopefully it won't take too long to get that done and ticked off my box no more needlepoint stocking on my whip list <laughs> and then we can enjoy something cute for Christmas this year and the the wreath hopefully I can get done before Christmas too so um and I think that's all I have planned for this coming week because of there's only I'm going to put some good time on both of those so you'll see um the start of January um, as well, which will be my travel piece. I'm trying to think if there's, if I feel like next time I don't have a whole lot to show, I might wait two weeks to do a video, but, and maybe do a stitch with me instead on something, but we'll see. We'll see if I come back um, next week um, for a proper update or something else. So we will wait and see. In the meantime, I hope you have a wonderful week and enjoy what you're stitch stitching on and hopefully you meet a few of your goals as well and I will talk to you later. Happy stitching!